What's going on you guys? It is JS here back with another video. So today is another video on the Fazbear Fry Fetch book and today we're going to be talking about the chapter Lonely Freddy. So if I had to do like if I had to say anything without spoilers I think this was a really really good chapter. Um, it was slow at the beginning but then towards the end it got really really good and honestly it was absolutely amazing so yeah we're gonna be going through this book today or i'm just gonna be giving you guys a quick summary but i'm also gonna look um on the book just to make sure that you know i'm making every making sure everything is all correct and all but yeah so um just to remind you guys that there will be major spoilers um i know i didn't mention it in the previous video but there is definitely going to be some major major spoilers um especially for this chapter which is honestly really really good so yeah let us begin so the main character in this chapter is named Alec. Now Alec is a 15 year old kid who basically is like, he's like the definition of a, like a bad kid pretty much. Like he doesn't like his sister. Um, he hurts her all the time. Not like, you know, punches her, but like says some mean things to her. And it's just absolutely horrible. Um, his sister is five years younger than him. Basically the characters of, I guess, interest in this, in this chapter, I should say. Pretty much Alex's mom and aunt teachers knew that he was like a troubled kid. Um, but then after uh, his sister Hazel was born, he became even more like a, of a troubled kid because she thought that, or Alec thought that um, she was spoiled all the time. She was gonna like ruin him and all that. It's just terrible. So his parents tries to use a book in order to make sure Alex's behavior is changed. And the books that they use is called uh, The Plan Planner, which is like a way for, I guess, the parents to make sure their kid is like continuing to, I guess, be well behaved or something like that. Um, so that's basically what they're trying to do in order to make Alex like a Alec a better kid. I know I keep saying Alex, but it's actually Alec. Um, they try to make him a, like a better kid and uh, try to make him less troubled. So that's just like a key thing that I wanted to point out to you guys real quick is that they use like this book to make sure that, you know, Alec is like a better kid again. So constantly in this chapter, um, his parents and Alec is talking about the plan, which is Hazel's 10th birthday party. So Hazel is gonna have a 10th birthday party. And surprisingly, it is revealed later on in the chapter that this birthday party is going to be at Freddy Fazbear's. Now, I'm not exactly sure because they don't even specify like what's like what time it is. So Alec goes into his room, which, um, it's like a Jack and, he says it's like a Jack and Jill bathroom that separated ha Alex's room and Hazel's room. And pretty much they're like, they, I think like from whatever I imagined it, they have like a same type of bedroom, which is pretty interesting. Um, so they like talk about like, oh, like, it's like, oh, are you okay? And he's just like, uh, yeah, why wouldn't I be? And they just get like a, in a major, major argument. Um, because, you know, Alec is always jealous of Hazel and he thinks that, like, in this book he, or this chapter, that she needs to be exposed to what he, she truly is. So, yeah, that's basically what they're doing at the moment. So Hazel starts continuing to, you know, make Alex, Alec to get more mad at her. Um, she's just, like, almost into his bedroom and he's just like, okay, one more step and you're basically... I'm gonna I'm gonna do something um so what Hazel was actually doing was that he, she was not actually wanting to you know go in his room and like mess around with the stuff she actually put the plan planner onto Alex's bed for some reason and it gets him like this some sort of idea that he wants to do so Alec comes out with a plan that after uh Hazel put the book onto his bed and he basically wants to have Hazel and himself switch roles like he's going to be the, you know the nice kid you know he's going to do everything his parents say but Hazel is going to do the exact opposite she's basically going to take Alex's place where you know she's just like the bad kid and then uh, like I said earlier Alec is going to be like Hazel where she just like follows her parents orders which it's, it's, a, it's a good plan like later in the like whenever I was reading this part um 
I just realized it's like they're actually building like a good relationship, like a good sibling re relationship after like 10 years, you know, of knowing each other. And, um, you know, I think this is like, I feel like it's a good way, you know, for them to bond together because in later in the chap, like in later in the chapter, he actually is starting to like, he's actually starting to like, like her as a sister, as you know as like an older brother and i think it's like a really cool that this whole plan is making their bond or i guess their sibling relationship become even stronger so yeah the day of uh the pre-planning or i guess the planning for hazel's birthday party um they go to uh freddy fazbear's and it does say on page one of uh 109 it says um you look fine, Mom, he said, which threw their mom for such loot. She could only blink at them both for snapping at them to buckle up and run into stop signs in order to meet Aunt Gigi on time at Freddy Fazbear. So this does confirm that they are going to go to a Freddy Fazbear location, as I said earlier in the video. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool that they're doing that. So Alec and Hazel are just, you know, playing skee-ball, having a good time to each other. Um, basically, like, they're doing, like, I guess, like having banter towards each other of like, um, like Alex says, you're truly terrible at this game. And then Hazel says, I'm not. So they're just having like com competitive banter towards each other, if that makes sense. And Gigi and his mom are talking about like, you know, what exactly to do, like what type of package they want. So they want like a Fres Fazbear front fun witch platter. And the mom says like, I have these coupons from the paper for Foxy's Pirate Palooza. And if you guys remember that, hold on, let me get it real quick. That term actually came from the uh, security logbook because, yeah, because on page, I believe 17, um, Foxy's Pirate Palooza is on this, which I think is like a really, really cool, like, I guess, shout out towards um, the survival logbook, which I think is really, really cool. And that first got my mind thinking, it's like, okay, I recognize that name. And that's from the security logbook, which I found really, really cool. While they are basically talking about what package deals they want to have. So whenever he asked um, his sister or something like that, so what's the big deal with this place anyway? And the reason why is because the deep dark, dark truth was that he always wanted his own birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's but he never made enough friends to justify the expense of a big party. Instead, his parents has always thrown together a haphazard celebration at home and call it a pool party. But it was hard to ignore the reality that the only ki other kids there were all Hazel friends, Hazel's friends she's been allowed to invite in order to fill out the crowd. And then she said like a nonchalant answer, like, I don't know. Which, and then he says, like, a uh, liar. You had this place for, like, four years in a row. So, basically, I guess over time, like, still with this, he's becoming jealous that he never got to have a birthday party at Freddy Fazbear. So, after he gets, like, done talking to his sister and everything, um, he actually runs in into, like, a, like, a small platform. And it's a smaller version, apparently, of Freddy Fazbear, and it's called Lonely Freddy. Now, it is described by uh, party prepper such as, At Freddy Fazbear's, we believe that no child should have the exper to experience the wonder and delight of Freddy Fazbear's family pizzeria alone. Use painting and technology and the touch of that Freddy Fazbear magic, your child can engage in a getting to know you session with the bear. Freddy will learn all about your child's favorite things, just like a true friend so i think it's pretty interesting it's like if someone you know is like feeling alone like a little kid is like feeling alone at the party uh they could just go over to lonely freddy and just like talk about it with them which i think is pretty interesting so they keep talking about like you know the party again like the party plans for the party and they talk about or alex alec convinced hazel to go into the wind tunnel now the reason why for this wind tunnel is because it has a yarg foxy which is like a foxy but its arms can like its arm can move with this hook which is, i think it's really interesting and i i really actually wish that was kind of like a real thing whenever i was reading that i was like that would be cool if this was actually a real thing not gonna lie so alec 
convinces Hazel to do the wind tunnel so she can get Yark Foxy. So a couple of days goes on and um, they're still, you know, following their plans of like, you know, Hazel is like the bad kid and then Alec is a good kid. So it comes, it goes through that with a like, they basically continue that until the party. So they go to the birthday party and Alec is getting really, really annoyed with Hazel because now he thinks that Hazel has become, you know, a good kid again and trying to get on his mom and dad's side. And he yells at her and she's like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Um, why is, why is mom and dad catching this on? And she's like really, really confused. It's like, wait, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And he continues yelling at her. It's like, you know, the party's almost over, right? Like, go get your stupid toy. Like, he's just yelling at her, like making fun, I guess, making fun of the yard Foxy, which I think is not, not really cool at all for him to do. Um, then he says this like really, really hurtful thing, which made my heart drop and feel for Hazel because he's like, you're not going to get everything you want forever. Soon you're going to get older and you won't be so precious. And then who's going to like you? So that just really, really hurt Hazel. And you know, she started to cry and everything. And she's like, and then, um, and she said like, fine, like a, like a hurtful, like way, like I'm hurt type of thing. And she goes into the wind tunnel. Uh, you know, she does everything in the wind tunnel, grabs a bunch of tickets. Um, she wins a free fountain drink, a bonus round at the Sky Dunk, and two promotional Freddy character cups. Um, so Alec is confused because like, wait, why did she not get the fox? And then also too, I forgot to mention um, earlier on, he found a coupon for the Yark Foxy, um, which he thinks he can use in order to, you know, make sure he gets it, I'm pretty sure. That's maybe what he was thinking. But um, apparently what she didn't realize is that in her hair, she actually had the coupon for the Yark Foxy, which shocked uh, Alec a lot. So, you know, everyone's all happy. Her friends are happy that she got the Yark Foxy. Her aunt, her mom, they're just like, oh my gosh, she finally got this Yark Foxy that she's been wanting. And then Alec is, you know, like, why did you get this? Like, seriously. Of course not. She gets everything she wants. And she's like, basically, he's like calling her like a major, major spoiled brat. Like, she's getting everything she wants. But Allie feels like that. He's like, he's mad that Hazel is getting everything that she wants. And it's making her parents go back to Hazel's side, but not Alex. So Hazel went over to the bathroom um, because she went over to cry, but her parents thought she was gonna, you know, like she started feeling sick, but she was actually telling her mom, like straight after she went, got out of the bathroom, that she wanted to give the Yark Foxy to Alec, but um, they said that's so like, that's so cool. Like you're giving the, like, her parents are so proud that Hazel is giving her brother um, the Yark Foxy, which is really cute, but Alec is not accepting it for some reason. But whenever Hazel said, I, w I just want you to stop hating me so much, just take it, okay? And that made my heart sink. It's just like, wow, she actually really wants to have a lovable brother. Like, she doesn't want, you know, this, I guess, pain of not having, like, being loved by her brother. He's like, you know what? He doesn't want it, but then later on he said, okay, you know what? And just rips the foxy, like the foxy arm off of him. And, and then Alex in big old rage decided to walk into like into the hallway. He starts hitting his arms and his shoulders on the wall. It's like, it's not his fault. Like he keeps saying to himself, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. But then he realizes it's like, it is my fault because he ruined the party, ruined Hazel, and basically like ruined his whole life pretty much in that one split moment. So he went further down the hallway just to make sure, you know, no one would go up to see him and be like, hey, like, for example, might be like, hey, what are you doing here? So he goes into a weird room. So he flips up the light switch um, in the room and he finds a lot of abandoned toys, arcade games, and a lot of machinery. So he kept on thinking about like the words that Hazel said to him, like, I bet you didn't even know what, that we moved here for you because he felt like that he wanted to be closer to his Aunt Gigi uh, because, you know, he truly understood him and he felt like his parents didn't really understood him because, so that's why they moved him out to near Aunt Gigi. And then he also thought of uh, whenever Hazel said, I wanted you to stop hating me so much. So. 
he clutched the Foxy and then he basically um, threw it across the room and just knocked everything on the floor. So he keeps digging and digging and trying to find it and apparently he can't. But then he started staring at the same Lonely Freddy that he was looking at a couple days ago. And he said, you again, you're being punished or something. And the bear asked him like, asked him like, hey, can we be friends? And he's like, um, sure. And he's like, okay, great. So he starts asking, you know, questions, Alec, about like, what's your favorite color, your favorite food? Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And then it starts getting a little weirder. So he's saying like, who do you admire most? What do you fear the most? And then all of a sudden, it's Pa Plut, like it's Pa starting like put his hand into like a soul. Like, for example, if this was the hand of the Pa, it basically was like this to him. I was pretty much like imagining that. It's like pretty much it was like doing this to him, like trying to get his hands into like his soul. And then all of a sudden, like after, you know, he said like, uh, whenever the bear asked him, uh, what's your biggest regret? He said hurting Hazel. And then all of a sudden, he was staring so hard into like the blue eyes, but then he like noticed that it changed to green. So he started like figuring out like, what's happening to me? Like, I don't understand. And he like, he feels so stiff. And he's like, you know, beginning to panic and everything. Like he doesn't even know what's going on. So he hears Hazel and his mom, you know, coming like down the hall and it's like, mom, Hazel, please help me. But they can't hear him for some reason. And then all of a sudden they find, or Alec is looking at himself holding the Foxy, which is really, really interesting. And Hazel and, and Alec and his mom left. So he starts to try and figure out a way to get out. Now he's very stiff. He's like, in order for him to get to move, he's like holding in his breath. He's like, to like counting to 10 and then he's able to move and then with a couple of obstacles after his mom and hazel left um he starts to find a way he started he started to find a way in order to get out um and he found and then he got into the i guess main area of the pizzeria and then whenever alec gets to the table with his friend like with hazel's friends alec notices that hazel was being happy and the reason why she was being happy is because Alec is being nice to her and sitting you know in front of her and talking to her and he's just like wait that's not me that's not me at all so he starts panicking and he's like even shouting it's like that's not me that's not me and and then someone notices um Alec on the floor and he and then someone you know picks him up and it's just like okay what's going on and then all of a sudden it's like like nasty stuff i don't want to even want like just like nasty stuff on him so it's just like oh i'm so sorry and then um they're just like okay we'll take care of this mess and then all of a sudden he was looking at a reflection and it's described as this there in the reflection stared a blue eyed two foot freddy fazbear and its arms extended and ready for a hug and he's basically became a lonely freddy which <laughs> Oh gosh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you guys about it later. So the employee takes Alec as a Lonely Freddy and tosses him to the trash pen. And, oh gosh, this last part though. The light from the room illuminated his surroundings in the bin long enough for Alec to see why it hadn't hurt when he fell in. He, his fall had been broken by dozens of plush bears that looked exactly like him. Dozens of discarded Lonely Freddies. 99, the employer said, and just like that, the light above him extinguished with the closing and locking of the lid. Panic seeped into Alex's pores, or what might have been once pores, once been pores. In his head, he screamed and he screamed. But in the end, the only sound that crept from his unhinged stuffed bare mouth was the tiniest squeak. Help, he thought he heard himself say. Then he realized it hadn't been him at all. It had been the bear beside him in the bin. Then it was the bear on the other side of the him, uh, other side of him. Pretty soon it was every bear in the bin. Their thin, muted screams for help swallowed by the metal and darkness that entombed them. Alec and his new friends, dozens of the lonely ones. And that is the end. So that gets to me thinking. This is gonna be going like a little theory part right here. 
that gets to me thinking that that is reminding me of Final Fantasy Freddy's Help Wanted. Because in the game, Glitchtrap is trying to, you know, merge with you, you know, become, like, become one of you. And you become Glitchtrap. And that kind of does remind me of it because the Lonely Freddy merged with Alec. Which is very interesting. And then also the other ones were also crying for help too. So other Lonely Freddies must have merged with other children. And that's why they were crying for help. So... That is really, really interesting. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Sorry if there was like a not a lot of explanation. Um, there's just not a lot in this part that I wanted to like, I guess, talk about. Or like there's not a lot of important things. But those were just the main things I wanted to talk about. But yeah, and also too. And the chapter that we are going to be discussing next video is called Out of Stock. And I'm also going to be talking about the secret chapter at the end of the book. So yeah, thanks so much for watching you guys and also do let me know in the comment section below if I actually really should merge um, the out of stock chapter with the secret chapter and merge it just into one video so I won't have to worry about making two separate ones. So thanks so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.